how you guys doing? Welcome in here to Rover Sports today. And um, I just wanted to make a video about Eli Manning. Um, I'm kind of glad actually that Eli, you know, chose that this was the time for him to retire. Um, you look at Andrew Luck and Luke Keekley and there's so many guys that, you know, they, they've suffered brutal injuries at the end of their football playing career. And for Eli to retire a giant, um, it does mean a great deal. It would have been nice to see him continue to compete and win. And, you know, Eli chooses to remember the good times, um, which were really the, the first like eight years of his career. And I wish Eli would have gotten an opportunity to even go for three um, championships, maybe go for four. Um, he's a special quarterback. He's a great guy. The thing about Eli Manning that I love is just him, you know, off the field. Is he's, he's himself. He's goofy. He's quirky. But he's a tough, great leader. And Eli Manning... Um, really the last quarterback, you know, during my childhood that, you know, I had a jersey of and I'm going to wear. And, you know, he's a guy that you look up to like an uncle, you know, being 25. And uh, Eli Manning, you know, to some Daniel Jones might be Eli Manning, the next Eli Manning. To some, you know, Mahomes, to some little kids uh, that are playing now. But even Saquon Barkley is a great kid, a great guy. But I'm just so close in age to Saquon Barkley that it'd be awkward for me to wear a jersey of him. He's a guy I'd like to be a good friend with. And, you know, same with Eli Manning to that degree. But really an amazing legacy and time. And just listening to John Mara today, it just reinforced why I love the New York Giants because they just value tradition so much and they value history and they value the relationships. And that's what Eli talked about today. He talked about the cafeteria staff. He talked about the trainers. He talked about the people that would let you in the security, every single person in the building. And then Eli even got to know their family. So basically Eli Manning, um, he just fostered all those relationships and um, for Tom Coughlin to be back there just was so special and Eli Manning thanking Coughlin, thanking Kevin Gilbride, uh, two of the great coaches for the New York Giants in their history. I, I mean, he didn't mention Spagnola um, but, or Perry Fuel, um, but those were defensive uh, minded coaches. But he also didn't thank McAdoo. He didn't thank Shermer. Odell Beckham was not in attendance today. Uh, and he didn't even like post anything on his Twitter about, you know, Eli Manning. But I was happy to see Tuck supporting Saquon. So many guys supporting Eli. And the, and the coolest part about today was having Brandon Jacobs at the, at the at the um, at the ceremony, having Hakeem Nix at the ceremony, um, having Plexico there, you know, you look at David Deal and Sean O'Hara so, and Jeff Fegels, so many um, former teammates. David Tyree was there, even Evan Ingram, Daniel Jones, Howard Cross, Phil Sims. So Phil Sims, you know, even though he never played with Eli Manning. I loved how Sims is there because, again, once you're a giant, you're always a giant. Or for Eli Manning, he said only a giant. And that's why it's so special being a fan of this team because we have such a close bond. We're like brothers. Uh, not only the fan base is that way, um, but the people in the facility in the building. And John Mara, um, you know, for the head coaching hires of Shermer and McAdoo, I, I definitely was one to criticize him. Uh, for sure. But the way that he handles Eli Manning, the way that he 
took Eli in like he's his own son and had that relationship with Archie Manning and had that relationship with all the Mannings. John Mara, Steve Tisch, and the ownership group for the way that they treat players, that, that's also why I'm so proud to be a New York Giants fan because of the way that the Giants treat players. And you see the former players all come back today for Eli. It speaks volumes about him and his legacy. And I think that that's so important to him. He always puts team over self. And that, I think, is an incredible characteristic. Also, when asked about being clutch, he says that he always thought about how awesome it would be when they would win the game, when they would score that touchdown, just the power of positive thinking instead of, you know, thinking negatively or being afraid of failure. And that's a great lesson, not only for myself, but for a lot of people out there in every walk of life. So he's a guy that you're so proud represented the organization at the most important position in sports. And just having Eli there for that long, um, but Eli's, you know, primarily a, a huge reason why I'm a Giants fan. It's just the way he carries himself. He's the ultimate underdog. You know, people thought that he was just a, uh, people thought that he was just another, you know, Manning and a silver spoon in the mouth kind of guy, but he's not, you know, he's the little kid of the family, um, the youngest child. He had to live up to one of the greatest players ever and Peyton Manning as his own brother, you had Tom Brady in the AFC, and just Eli Manning had a good had a good arm. It wasn't an, an absurd arm, but it wasn't a weak arm. Eli Manning could make deep throws across the field. He used to have more mobility and pop when he was younger, um, but he definitely was not fleet of foot. He was not an incredible athlete. His processing skills, I mean, he, he wouldn't like be able to like shed tackles or make the most ridiculous throws. But that's why I think Eli Manning is such an incredible case because he got the most out of his ability. And without that hard work, without him having the belief, without him being an ultra competitor and trying to win and him playing through injuries, without him doing all those things, he wouldn't even be close to being considered a Hall of Famer, but because Eli Manning overachieved and won games that he wasn't supposed to win and going on the road in legendary ways, those legendary wins, I think, get him into the Hall of Fame. And yes, I'm biased, and yes, I love Eli Manning, and I won't attend the Hall of Fame until Eli goes and gets in. So I might be going or I might not. But I think Eli Manning is going to go into the Hall of Fame. And he never was a dominant quarterback. Um, but that's what made the experience more fun. It was a roller coaster. He can throw a horrible interception. He could get sacked. And in 2007, before that run, I mean, Eli Manning, um, there were a lot of talks after that Minnesota game when he threw four interceptions, you know, whether Eli Manning was long for the job in New York. And it wasn't always a honeymoon. It wasn't always a perfect fit. It was a perfect fit for Eli and the Giants internally, but football-wise, there were some rough moments in there, uh, even at the beginning. The 23 to nothing loss to Carolina, losing to the Eagles in the wild card round. Um, the Minnesota four interception game. There were some tough times in there for sure. I mean, Dallas beating us when we were wearing red jerseys. But I think it all changed for Eli Manning uh, that that game that week 17 against Tom Brady when he went toe to toe with an 18 and 0 team, and the Giants were down four right in the fourth quarter, and it was a Saturday night game on the NFL Network. Eli Manning threw four touchdowns to the Plexico that game. That was such a special uh, that was such a special game and a special moment. Then Eli Manning. Had a really weird first quarter in Tampa Bay. They were down like 7 or 10 points to John Gruden, to a team with Jeff Garcia, Vincent Jackson, like some talented, talented football players on that team. Tiki's brother, you know, just... And for Eli just to pull out of that hole, and I think Eli Manning went 14-24 that day. Or I know the score was 24-14, but Eli was hitting Toomer. He played great. Final three quarters, getting a solid road win just to get to Dallas to play a 13-3 and juggernaut. They had Miles Austin. They had Jason Witten in his prime, Marion Barber. 
I think that they might have had Jones as their running back. Um, and then their defense was also really good. Terrence Newman, I remember, Roy Williams. They just had some defensive players that were just phenomenal. And I, I got to go to that game. And uh, it was the Jessica Simpson thing, you know, with Romo dating Jessica Simpson back in 08 and uh, 07, 08. And that was the last game at the last uh, Irving Stadium. And the Cowboys throughout that game were, were winning the game, dominating that game. And if it wasn't for that two-minute drill at the end of the half, that evened out a half in which the Cowboys dominated the Giants, Eli Manning, I think, hitting Toomer or Tyree in the back of the end zone, orchestrating that two-minute drive, was just so pivotal in that game. He just had a sense for the moment. An incredible, incredible competitor. Tough as hell. And just a guy that when he got to the playoffs could taste could taste victory. And and then Eli Manning orchestrated a drive later in the game where Jacobs was fan fantastic. The defense buckled down, was able to get an interception late to win that game in 07. Um, but the defense was good. But in 07, you know, it's a lot more running. It's a lot the scores weren't as high. I think that helped Eli Manning too, and that's the era that he played quarterback in. So his stats might not be as impressive as guys like Mahomes or even guys like a Kyler Murray today or, you know. So because today's more spread out and defenses were more physical back then. So and then in the 20 in the 2007 NFC Championship game in, in Frigid Lambeau Field, I mean, he went into that environment and played just as good as Brett Favre did. And it's not like the defense was impeccable either. They gave up a 70-yard touchdown to Donald Driver in that game. I mean, Brett Favre still had his moments. He put up 20 points in that game, and the defense was kind of holding on. And Eli Manning, um, Eli Manning needed to sturdy some drives late in that game. And yes, you know, winning does include your defense stepping up. Um, and that's where the Corey Webster interception was unbelievable. And Lawrence Tynes getting the fur Tynes a charm chance. One of the greatest games I've ever seen. One of the greatest NFC championships of all time. Just a legendary back and forth game in Frigid Lambeau with Brett Favre playing his last game as a Green Bay Packer. With Donald Driver on the field. Um, I think Amon Green, Greg Jennings maybe. I just think that Packers team was just loaded, you know, with talent. And in 15 and then in, and then when he played the 15 and 1 Green Bay Packers, that team was the best team in the whole league. And Eli Manning played a beautiful game there. Um putting up like 42 points. Defense played great and then against the Niners, got the got the crap kicked out of them. Just kept coming back for more. So this guy has embodied everything to be a New York Giant. And those two runs, it's not just two seasons. I mean, it's it's epic, epic playoff games. So when people can compare Eli Manning to Nick Foles or Joe Flacco, Joe Flacco is a more respectable comparison because Joe played a lot of seasons in Baltimore, played 10 or 12 years. Nick Foles has never really been a starting quarterback. He had a tremendous run like a Jeff Hostetler. You know, in that Falcons uh, game with Nick Foles, uh, Nick Foles beat Matt Ryan at home when he didn't play a good game at all. Then Nick Foles was able to play great against the Vikings unequivocally, but that was a home game and the team was 13-3. and three. Eli Manning's teams, when they won the Super Bowl, had to go on the road and they were no better than a four seed. They were the six seed and they were the four seed. So they were the worst seeds that you could pretty much be to be in the playoffs. And that's what made those Super Bowls so crazy is that Eli Manning, by the way, is there's only been four times in NFL history in the postseason that a team that has five less losses than their opponent in a regular season record scenario beats the team in the playoffs. And one of those games happened way back when in like the 60s. Another one was this year with Ryan Tannehill and the Tennessee Titans. They were a 9-7 and seven team and they beat a 14-2 and two Ravens team. But 
Eli Manning 50% of all playoff games, which has only happened four times in NFL history. Eli Manning, a 15-1 and team going against a 9-7 and Giants team. Eli Manning prevented Aaron Rodgers. Eli Manning and the defense prevented Aaron Rodgers from getting another Super Bowl championship when Rodgers was at its peak and McCarthy and the, and the Packers. So he derailed them. He derailed Favre. He derailed Jim Harbaugh of an opportunity with Alex Smith to win a, a Super Bowl, to get to a Super Bowl championship. The, the road wins at the Cowboys, at the Packers twice, at the 49ers. Those are legendary games against really tough competition, against really good quarterbacks, against Romo, against Rodgers and Favre, against an Alex Smith that was a really good quarterback, and against a Jim Harbaugh-led defense. So going on the road, and then, of course, beating Tom in those two championships, that's what pretty much being a quarterback is about, is rising to the moment being clutch, being there for your teammates. He embodied absolutely everything. And he's the ultimate underdog. He's perfectly imperfect, which is why he's such a special guy. He's a goofy guy. He's not dominant like Peyton, Tom Brady, John Elway. He's a guy that had to battle for everything. He was the David in those Super Bowls against Tom Brady in 2007 and 2011. Even though he's a Manning, people think that he's a Goliath because he you know, has the bloodlines. But he is kind of the Jon Snow of the NFL. Not in the sense, I know Jon Snow's a dominant character, a dominant you know, leader. But Jon Snow was kind of the, the runt of the family, the runt. Jon Snow was a guy that was barely related to the family and that didn't really get the respect. And Eli Manning, Archie loved Eli, so he was still treated better than Jon Snow. But the point that I'm going to say is that Peyton Manning and Cooper Manning were elite. And Peyton Manning is the most elite. And Eli came along. And uh, Eli just did things in his own quirky, incredible way. So proud to be a Giants fan. Just shows you why our franchise is successful. Because of John Mara. Because of what he puts into the situations. Because of how he cares for our players. And because our players show up and love each other. And, and that's what they told Eli Manning too. They said, Eli, if you leave New York, it's not going to be the same. I mean, this is the best organization in the NFL in sports. And you get treated like a king here. And you shouldn't leave. And Eli Manning stayed it out. The celebration with Daniel Jones culminating a great career. I knew Eli would not retire the year before because he lost to the Cowboys in that in that just horribly depressing game where they had a lead. Dak Prescott came back and beat them. And for Eli Manning to usher in Daniel Jones, it's something Daniel Jones will never forget. And for Eli Manning, if Jones turns out to be a superstar, maybe another Hall of Famer, maybe a quarterback who wins more rings, Eli Manning's going to be right there. And he's going to probably get a latch on to a role with the New York Giants, maybe a consulting role. Eli Manning's now going to try to be with his family even more. And um, you have Luke Keekley, you have Andrew Luck. Just an honor, and, and the large reason why I'm a Giants fan is because of Eli Manning, and I just think it was the right time, and uh, man, I mean, the way he was celebrating with Daniel Jones at the end, you know, playing Flip Cup, I mean, you just don't see that type of stuff from, from older quarterbacks and veteran quarterbacks, and the guy just didn't have an ego, and he loved just being there with with each and all of his teammates, and that's why you see punters and kickers love Eli Manning, <laughs> offensive linemen. He's not the type of quarterback that is going to ever alienate any teammates, and he has the respect of, of all his peers around the NFL. Even today, Teddy Bruschi, very classy you know, tweeted out how much of a competitor Eli was. Uh, Tom Brady, uh, incredibly classy. The commissioner, Roger Goodell. Um, it's so special to see the Eli love because he's an incredible person. And as a football player, I'm not going to tell you he's this 
all dominant player, but he is the ultimate overachiever, even as a number one pick. And yes, Eli had talent. He had talent, absolutely, to make some of those throws, to make some of those plays. But even during these tough times, I got to respect Eli Manning more during these tough times than during the good times. Because Eli during tough times didn't change who he was. It's easier. It's easy to be team first and say all the right things when you're rolling and you're on top of the world. But when 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 you're having horrible, when you're having some down seasons, it's so hard to go to work and be the same guy and be the same great teammate and be the same consistent force. When times are good, times are bad. And that's what Eli Manning showed to everybody here. And to have Joe Judge there in attendance, you have Joe there to not have Shermer and McAdoo, it's just so telling. It's so telling. What an organization, what a quarterback, and what a player. And Eli should be completely celebrated for the way that he is as Eli Manning, the character. And that's what's so important. When you remember legends of the game, you're going to remember the characters. You're going to remember Larry Fitzgerald, Jason Witten. You're going to remember Strahan. You're going to remember incredible leaders like Ed Reed, guys that elevated teammates, Frank Gore. You're going to remember the legends of Erlacher, of Lance Briggs, of, of guys, you know, that elevated teammates, elevated teams to be successful. So, Eli, thanks so much, man. And uh, it, it's been fun doing this video. I hope all of you guys got to watch the Eli Manning press conference as well and got to enjoy um, some more memories with Eli Manning.